Linda Tommy has uh, been extremely generous with her time and her talent to come and present to you her work and tell you about how she and what she does with art and then get you clued in on what you're going to be doing tonight because you're going to have some fun. And I want you to know right now that we mix this stuff that you're going to be using with our 3 8 inch drill and the big paddle bit in a great big bucket. And it was kind of fun just to do that. I think you're going to have a great time tonight. So let me introduce to you our clinician, uh, an artist for tonight's event, Linda Tarn. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thank you for all coming. Um, it's pretty neat on a wintry night that you're all coming out here to see some art. And um, it's, it's going to start out with a slideshow. And then I'm going to talk about what we're going to do tonight. And really, it's like playing in a mud puddle. It's so much fun. We're going to, I'm going to teach you how to draw a face. And then I'm going to try to teach you how to draw a face in mud. And that's what you get to take home. All right? It's really fun. And anyways, um, let me get my notes. And you can hit the lights. So I've been an artist um, pretty much my whole life. I grew up in Missoula and I actually went to Lewis and Clark grade school and Sentinel High School and the University of Montana. And I still live here. I love Missoula. Um, and this, this first painting is sort of similar to what we're going to do tonight. It's, it's using the same materials. This is called a collage. And a collage is just a painting that has a lot of different components. Am I standing in the way for you over on this side? OK. It's, um, a collage is just a mixture of different things. Like this is a painting. It's a drawing. I've glued stuff on there. I have these antique fish cards that I really love that you can see in the bottom right. This picture is called um, Prayers for Safe Travel. And I did it this last summer. No, I, I did it two years ago, and I was going on a big trip and taking my family overseas, and I was really worried about it. And that's what this is about. The map of the country that we were going to is in the background, and there's a feather floating down on her shoulder that I drew. And it's, um, there's little praying hands. And I actually did those hands when I was in grade school and found those somewhere in my house. I'm kind of a collector of odd things. And so anyways, that's what this picture is about. And um, oh, before I forget, there's a lot of other people that I would really like to thank tonight for making this happen. It's, it's your art teachers, Janet Potts and Nancy Zadra. Melanie Graham put all this, all this stuff together. We never could have done it without her. Um, there have been, it's been kind of a giant project. There's been students from the University of Montana. There's students from Hellgate High School. There's a substitute art teacher here. So we're all here to make this a really great night for you. Um, so this next picture is really bad. But it's me as a kid. And um, I, so like I said, I grew up here in Missoula. And I grew up in Patty Canyon. My family took us out in the mountains a lot. This is my horse, Cheetah. And, um, I was really grateful that my parents did this for us because I spent a lot of time in the woods. And this, this was a pack trip. We went into Kootenai Creek, which is down in the Bitterroots. And Cheetah actually fell in the creek with all of our sleeping bags, which so it was kind of an epic trip. But um, these, these trips were really good in that when you get out of your house and away from your TV and away from your phone, you start thinking about things like rocks and sticks, and you can build things with rocks, and you can find charcoal in fire pits and draw on rocks and sticks and all kinds of things that you can, you can do just with found materials when you're alone and you're away from everything else. And that was kind of a, an important part in my growing up. Um, I, let's see here. Um, I, I was really interested to see a lot of you that, that came and you got your drawing board and you got your crayon and most of you are doodling. Like as soon as you sat down, you started scribbling. I think you guys did for sure. And that is so awesome. It's like you give a person something to draw with, you give them something to draw on and away they go. Go home and look at your phone book. I bet it's covered with doodles. 
And I was a big doodler, and my whole family, I mean, we always were scribbling and making little things, and um, I think that people need to draw. I think there's a, there's a basic need for human beings to make marks that you can stand back from and say, hey, I did that. You know, if you look at cave paintings of the, you know, ancient people, they, they had to, like, put their hands in some kind of pigment and press it up against the rock, and it's still here today, thousands of years later. So there's a need to, to draw, and I want to encourage um, you kids to keep doing it. And a lot of times adults stop at some point, which is kind of sad. But um, if you can keep yourself drawing, you'll, you'll be satisfying a need that you have. This was a drawing I did when I was a kid. And um, I, I, I really liked horses, and I kind of liked wild colors. And I think I entered, entered this in the fair, and it's, that's a really fun thing to do is when you do art, go ahead and enter it in the fair. It'll get in there. And then you can go to the fair with your friends and family and, and see your work up on the wall, and that's a really exciting thing. And it's also a really neat thing that your art teachers do because every other year they have a show at the mall, and you can go and see your work, and that's a really exciting thing for you. Um, this was a, a painting I did a couple years ago, and for a long time, I never wanted to draw a face. Faces really scared me because they were so hard. And I would draw people, but I'd never put faces on them. People were always kind of, their faces were turned off to the side. Um, I did study art in college, and really it was, I went all the way through college with not ever drawing a face. I did photographs of faces, and I did sculptures of faces, but I never drew them. This one is called Suspicion, and I drew it from a model. That's mostly how I work, is I draw from an actual person, and then I'll go, go work on it later. So I started this on a model, and then I took it home and finished it. This one, um, I like the name of it, and I put it in our bathroom, and because it's called Suspicion, my kids brush their teeth better, even when I'm not there. <laughs> Okay, and so um, I can't see my notes very well. Um, I just I just want to like I'm just going to go through a whole bunch of my slides, but all I want to say is you just have to keep drawing all the time. And if you say you watch television every day, have paper with you so you're just drawing because you'll you want to do that. Um, this is another one I did. It's on paper. I'm just going to kind of go through these kind of quickly. They're just my faces. This is an oil painting. I also have um, the actual artworks in the back if you want to go look at them afterwards. And this one's a little chalk pastel, which is the real dry pastel, which you've probably worked with. I think this was all the same model, but I just gave her different hair color, which is a really fun thing to do. You can do anything you want when you're an artist. And so this is a big charcoal drawing I did, and I love to draw on newsprint and cardboard. And so when I'm drawing from a model, I um, kind of do these kind of quick drawings. I'm just going to show you a few of these. This is on cardboard. I love drawing on cardboard, and you can see the texture of the cardboard coming through there. And this, this happened to be a drawing I broke my wrist two years ago, and so this made me draw with my other hand which is another really good thing to try. It really makes your eye work when you have to draw with the, the hand you're not used to. So this is a drawing. This was actually on the flyer that you got. And this was a, our model was dressed in this really old-fashioned, fluffy prom dress. And um, so I did the drawing, and then I took it and turned it into a painting. And this is a, it's a painting about missing Montana because the model was living overseas. And then this is another kind of quick drawing. And this is the painting that came out of that one. It's called Golden Ginkgo. And this one is called Ruth. And somebody came in tonight with the name Ruth. And I, I love the name Ruth. And so um, I just wanted to point that out because there is a Ruth here. But when I am drawing, I like to, to um, get as many lines as I can and as much shading as I can so that when I go to my studio, I've got something to go on for my painting. 
And I'm really sorry about this. It's really tiny. This is, it's just a part of a really big painting. And um, the next one, again, just shows you the charcoal drawing. And then this is one of my favorites. This is um, called August. And this is part of another large painting. Um, this had to do with what we had last August, which was that horrible smoky weather that lasted forever. And her eyes are all bloodshot and in the background that it looks like really bad air. So that, that's what that one's about. And then this one is called We All Need Water. And um, in my travels, we had gone to Greece, and in the little town we were staying in, we had no water for a week. And it really made me think of how necessary water is. And so that painting has a bunch of words in the background in Greek about you know, wow, we needed water so bad, and then the fish need water, and this is a collage again. And I do like to kind of abstract my faces a little bit, which, which is a fun thing for you to do. And this one is uh, a picture of me and my dog, so it's called Woody and Me, and it's a line drawing in the mud. And this mud that you're going to use tonight is um, sheetrock paste or sheetrock mud, which you all have in your house, on your walls, probably. Although I don't want you drawing on your walls. But um, it's, a, it's a material that's in every hardware store. In fact, everything we're doing tonight is stuff that you can pick up at the hardware store. Um, so what, what I'm you know, going to have you do, uh, we need the lights on now. We are going to draw a face. And it's really easy. All you have to do is that. <laughs> Can you guys do that? So check out where I have the eyes, because almost everybody will put the eyes pretty high, and they'll make little skinny necks like that. So um, I want you to take out your crayon, and I want you to draw big. Like, don't, don't make your face just a little teeny thing on, on your paper, but let's make it fill that paper. So this is what I'd like you to try to draw. Oh, you didn't get one. Oh, you didn't get paper? Oh, we've got lots of paper. They need a little paper right in the middle here. So when you're drawing that, it's, it's roughly an egg shape or an oval. So you've got a drawing board, and just, you know, just make a big old oval. Like, I really didn't want you to make a little face like that. Okay, so, so make a pretty good size oval. And it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, because none of us are perfect. And once you get that, I want you to to put your hands kind of right here by your ears, and you'll notice that your neck takes off right there, right below your ears. It's not this little skinny thing like that, that smiley face I had was probably just the size of your windpipe. So make your neck something that you really could hold up. Your head weighs 10 pounds. So, so make your neck something that could really support that. So it's pretty wide. Some men have necks that are just, just almost as thick as their head. So necks are thick. Don't make a little skinny neck. Okay. Are you, are you about done like with that? So the next thing I want you to do is divide your head. So you're going to make a vertical division right down the hat, right down the straight middle of your egg. And then you're going to do a horizontal line right in the middle.
So on my, on my drawing here, where, where do you think I should put the eyes? Should I put them about here? Put it down here? Does that look up about right there? OK, you know what I'm going to have you do right now is take your crayon, and I want you to take the, the blunt end and put it kind of right in the corner of your eye. Not in your eye. OK? About right there. And then you're going to mark your fingers with, you know, yeah, mark where that is in the bottom. Not up your nose. <laughs> OK. And then flip it and have it again in the corner of your eye to the top of your head. Put your hand up here. Check it out. It's the same length, isn't it? It's pretty amazing. Your eyes generally, and this is general, OK? Everybody's head is different. But roughly, your eyes are in the middle, right there. So um, I'm going to put my eyes in here, kind of like that, just sort of like an alien at this point. And then um, I also want to show you I've got a skull. Wow. <laughs> it's from a skeleton. Actually, it's not. It's made of plaster. It's really heavy. But what I want you to look at is you can kind of tell on this skull if your eyeball's right in the middle of that orbit, which is where it sits. If you look at that, and you can actually measure it with your crayon, it's halfway. You've got to put a little hair on this guy. But it is, your eyes really truly are halfway, which is surprising to a lot of people. Because the, from your eyes up is kind of boring. And people, when they're drawing faces, want to put something up in there. They don't want a big blank space. But it's there. So, um, so we've got our eyes. And, and I'm going to show you something really fast about eyes. So eyes are balls. Your eye is a ball. If you were to take it out, it's an actual round ball. Then you've got the colored part. And then you've got the dark part, your pupil, right in the middle, like that. And then you've got these really great things that protect your eyes and close so your eyes get um, lubricated. It's a lid, OK? And that's where your lashes come out, you know? So we don't see the whole ball. We only see part of it. And that's really important when you're drawing a face. It's, if you look at the eye, and I have an eyeball here. Well, it's a plaster model of an eye. And this might be too far for you guys to see. It's going to be over there, but it would be kind of fun for you to really check it out. Come over, and these are designed to be felt and so that you can kind of see where that lid comes you know, down onto the colored part of your eye and the pupil, the dark part. So when you're drawing the eye, that's kind of how it's going to be. And you also have a lower lid, OK? That's just kind of a little detail about eyes. But so anyways, so you've got the corner of your eye. Now, we've got to figure out some other things on there. We've got to have a nose and a mouth. And the nose, generally, is it's not halfway. It's a little bit above halfway. So I'm going to put a little mark right there. And then the mouth, the mouth, you know, the mouth has one line in between the top and the lower lip. And it's about right midway, about like right there. It really looks like an alien, doesn't it? OK, so then we, might, we need to find out how wide our noses are. And noses are surprisingly wide. You know, I'm going to change my slide. So while I'm talking, you can be looking at this old master drawing. I think this is Rembrandt. But while I'm talking, maybe you could, it's, it's kind of hard to see. But you can kind of look at that. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> like you could even take your crayon and you could measure and really, from here to there and here to here is the same. And then, to get the width of the nose, 
You just come straight down from the corner of the eye. And this is about the width of your nose. And the other really cool thing, once you get your eye in there, is your pupil, if you drew a line down from your pupil, that's how wide your lips are. And look at this old master drawing. And, you know, these are, everybody is different, and everybody's going to, you know, be tweaked a little bit differently. But this can get you started. And I think I was almost 30 years old before an artist friend of mine in, in uh, New Jersey said, you don't ever draw faces? Why not? Let me show you. And it really helped a lot because I, I started thinking about this. And then you can go ahead and put some lips on there. This is the chin. There's the nose. you got some nostrils. A lot of times people will put a line for the nose. You can do that if you want. I do that quite a bit in my drawing. This one, this nose is just shaded. And I want you to start looking at faces. You can look at the person next to you. And you can see it's the shading. We don't have noses that have a line on them. But we do have noses that have shading. And then we have eyebrows. You can put the eyebrows in. And then you've, you've got your face. And you've also got this really neat thing between your mouth and your nose, which is that groove. And you can put that groove in there, but again, it's just kind of shading. It's not really a line. And our lips aren't really lines either. It's more just a very slight variation in pigment that makes us have upper and lower lips. But this is a pretty big line. And I love staring at old master drawings because you can see he made a big... Um, do, you, do you think you could turn the lights off again briefly? I love, to, I love to really study these drawings because um, you can see that, that Rembrandt made a big, big dark line right there, made a big dark line on the upper lid. He doesn't spend time putting in the lashes because you don't need them. And you probably can't even see them when you're drawing from a model, but this line says lashes. Another really important thing about doing an eye is the lid line. That lid line is so important and so expressive. So think about that when you're looking at a face and when you're drawing a face. The nose, this, you know, again, I was just telling you, that's just, that's just shadow. There's not like a big hole there that he drew for nostrils. And then the lip gets definition from this dark line and that dark line. When, when I'm looking at a model, I look a lot at that. I don't, I don't look at this line, I look at the dark areas that show up on the face. So that's about it, and now I'm going to show you how to work with this mud. So we could do the lights again. And what I wanted you to do is just practice on the paper with your crayon, and you have lots of paper. If you came up with something you don't like, just take another piece of paper. And then I want you to um, you're going to do this drawing in the mud. And, and you might be frustrated because when you draw in the mud, you can't have all this detail. It's got to be pretty abstract. And that's, this is like I, when, I, when I show you a picture, I'm not showing you a formula because then, then it wouldn't have any emotion or it wouldn't really look like a person or anything. This is just something to get you started. And so when you do your drawing on the mud, this one I already showed you, but you're just going to do a line drawing. And then um, you can take it home once it dries and do other stuff to it if you want. And so what I'd like you to do is write down a couple things. Because when you go home tonight, you're going to go home with a box, and you're going to go home with your piece, which is covered with sheetrock mud. It's going to be really sloppy. You're going to have to be careful when you get it home, but just let it dry, and it'll be hard. It'll turn hard just like, just like the wall in your house. And so um, these are things you can do to finish your piece, like, like this one. So you're going to go home tonight. It's got a, you've got 
these prepared boards, you're going to draw through the mud, so you're going to have like little turquoise lines, and you're going to have, a lot of them have other really cool colors around the side. You can draw the lines out, so you're going to be able to see some of that color come through. Um, once you get it dry, I love to use this um, coarse sandpaper, which I bet a lot of you have at your house, and you can sand it down and make it smooth. And then um, there's some things that you can, you can add color. I use really strong tea, black tea. Most of you probably have that in your house. Make a cup with like four tea bags. Make it really strong. You can paint that all over this piece. Let it dry, sand it, and then you're going to get sort of a variation in color. That's what I did with her, is I had different color washes on there, and then I'd sand through to get the light, <clears throat> the light area here and on her nose. Um, so you can do um, really thin tea. So you might want to write these things down so you remember what you, how you can finish it, or you don't have to finish it at all. I think it'll be really neat when you just take it home. Um, you can thin down acrylic paint, and you thin it down so it's like water, and brush that on. You just have to be patient and let it dry in between, or watercolor works really great. And then you sand and sand, and then you can glue on stuff if you want. You can glue on buttons, you can glue on photos you like, you can glue on little pieces of fabric, anything you want, and make it a collage. And then if you want to have it shiny on, at the very end, use a really thin wash of half Elmer's glue and water. And when you paint it on, it's going to look cloudy, but it'll dry clear. So those are ways you can finish your piece. And um, we're going to take this down, and you guys are going to work here on the floor. But first, I'm going to just show you how to work with this mud. Um, I'm going to put on an apron. So at your workstations, you've got a mirror. So I'd like you to come down and look at yourself. And just, just look at that. Look at your face in a different way and try to really see what those measurements are. Um, you know, you kind of want to know, if I put my eyes here, how far away is my nose? And just think about those things as you're drawing in the mud. So you're going to take this little cup, and like Paul said, they tinted up great big buckets of this stuff. And you're going to put it on your piece. Sort of like that. It's kind of like chocolate pudding or butterscotch. So you've got it about like that. And then you're going to take your squeegee which is a piece of foam core, and just pull it down. And I actually want you to work in your box, but to show you. So you put a pretty thin coat down, like that. And you can get it pretty smooth. And then the extra, if you would, um, you've each got a chopstick that we're going to draw with, and you've got these little tongue depressors. So if you'd put the extra in another cup, then we won't waste it, because you may want more. And I really like to draw with chopsticks. I draw with them all the time at home, which is kind of neat, because it's um, Chinese New Year today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. OK. so. You've got your, your board ready, and then you're just going to start drawing. And um, I might start with just the bottom part of my egg, and you're going to get um, goop, which I, I like to just put on my apron, but you're going to use paper towel. So I've got my chin. I'm going to put a neck in there. And then. Um, I'll go ahead and do the top part, because we have to have the top of our head. And then I'm going to put my eyes in there, and a nose, and a mouth. 
And, and then I gotta get some hair. You can do whatever you want with your hair. You could put earrings in if you want, big earrings. You can do whatever you want. And then after you draw it, you go, ooh, I don't like that. So then you just take your squeegee and you start over. And that's what I like about this process is you can just keep drawing over and over till you get something you like, you know? However you want. So the other thing that I like to use a lot is forks. And forks make really great hair, don't they? You can do really fun things with forks. And then we've also got a bunch of clay tools, which maybe you've worked with at school. But this, this one has like a little comb at the end. And you can take this comb and you can make shapes. So you guys will have fun. And again, if you don't like it, you just wipe it off and start over. And, and I'm thinking you can use your drawing kind of as something to go from. But make it big. This stuff does not work with a little teeny face. It's just not going to work, OK? So try to fill up your space. Um, so when you draw, I would have a piece of paper towel and wipe wipe it off, because then you'll end up with a cleaner line. Um, so at this point, I think you're ready. You guys, you're going to stand up and you're going to go find a workstation. Melanie? There's enough for two people at each station. For the mud. find a place to work. A, a Shannon. Emma, oh. I have never known how to draw a face. Really? It's awesome. It's great. Good. And then your dog will be <laughs> So um, I think it would be best if you tried to work in your box. That, that might just save your clothes. <laughs> but if you feel like that's hard, you could probably work that out. But.
Yeah, you can do that. There you go. That works good. Like this one. 